the upper body of the humanoid including the torso the hands are made of 5 mm acrylic sheet we have used microprocessor rpi rpi 3b plus to uh, to control the whole humanoid robot we have used mg 946r high torque servo motors to control the motion of the legs then uh, we have also used the same motors in the shoulders the further we have used uh, mg 90s uh, small servo motors to control the motion uh, in the shoulder and the elbow we have used uh, pca 9685 servo motor driver for parallel operations of the servos now vishnu has uh, prompted the raspi to start the code now we can see the uh, humanoid robot is walking and it is giving a dab there was something called as passive dynamic walkers it just shows how a mechanical system can work without any electricity it is just powered by gravity just by understanding how it works we could solve a lot of our problems you have to get the simulation very accurate you have to model uh, model it in such a way that it is very precise to the real world uh, system we disassembled every parts in the robot measured what the weight was and then we calculated inertia matrix for it and then we made sure that uh, our uh, simulation was very accurate earlier i thought that designing and implementing a humanoid robot would be like uh, out of the world difficult kind of thing but the way mentors have brought out challenges in front of us and how things unfolded in front of us like the things happened and 2 3 days ago when the robot started walking stably it was like seeing your baby walk for the first time it was that kind of experience some of the very key points given by dinod sir like uh, the most recently i remember is not getting emotionally attached with your design the first iteration of a robot i was very much uh, emotionally attached to it after the lecture i uh, like got to learn how to see from a bird's eye view like okay there are going to be more design improvements and iteration if you get a broad pro problem statement keep on asking why is like if this is a solution why is that solution applicable like how you are going to do so to you know refine your problem statement you should ask as many questions on that problem statement as much as possible we all used to debate on things like why this is not working why it should work this way only they provide a you know open culture like we were not constrained to working in cubicles or anything like everybody all your peers different groups are sitting just around you so you can slide back your chair ask for a flyer ask two more questions with them they come to your table ask you questions have some fun and we were all working together like there was an harmony in that also let's say our mentors have uh, some opposing ideas of what we want to implement and they were open for a debate of why you know things should happen uh, this way or that way some of our conversation with kavi arya sir like we used to have opposing this one and we could tell it and they never got offended uh, because of uh, you know opposing view points it was fun all together so probably that you don't get to see it everywhere you are not prescribed a syllabus or you are not given a constrained path or anything to learn like you learn in your own way whenever i used to ask doubts from my uh, project partner or mentors no they never spoon fed me anything they said ki like discover your way search it on google try it youtube try it out yourself and if still the problem persists then ask them so you know in this way you learn a lot like if you if somebody just you ask for help and you get that help it is as good as the person doing that work himself but you are the hands for him so you don't learn in that process this process uh, like where you do something you fail again you try you google things you watch youtube tutorials that that enables like good uh, experiential learning that you can see